Parents, welcome, welcome for coming on our podcast. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about iMed Pharma in general for any of our listeners who don't know you or the company yet? Sure thing, sure thing. Well, thank you very much uh, for having me on the show. Uh, I am really excited to be here, especially in the crazy times that we're living. It's too bad that we couldn't be sitting, you know what I mean, in the same room together, but uh, we do what we can. Um, so my name is Terence Morose. Uh, I'm a 26-year-old uh, living in London, Ontario, Canada, uh, and I do work for iMed Pharma, which is a company uh, based out of uh, Montreal, Quebec, uh, Canada. So iMed Pharma is an ophthalmic uh, service provider, so we provide a lot of products primarily for dry eye. We used to do some surgical products as well. Uh, recently, we moved away from that, and we're focusing just on our dry eye stuff. So what's nice about our company is that uh, we do diagnostics. Um, we usually have an option for every kind of product. So some uh, companies are better known for, let's say maybe doing a drop or like a certain type of ointment or maybe an omega. But with us as an optometrist, you can come to us to start a dry eye clinic and we have an option for everything, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now something else as well is that we also have a protected channel of sales, meaning that you know if you're an optometrist, you can retail our products um, successfully without having to um, compete against like Amazon, Shopify, different things like that. And that's why we wanted iMed to be featured on our podcast because we also sell iMed products ourselves at um, multiple clinics that we work at. And you can really tell the, the difference in quality of just how your eyes feel um, after using those products. And it is nice that there's, um, what's the word, continuity with all of the products when you're giving that to your dry eye patients, like you have the mask, you have the drops, you have the lid scrubs, you have the omegas, you have everything, and you guys have IRPL. Um, mm -hmm. So we already had one episode about what IRPL is and really getting into the nitty gritty of how it works. So we really want to ask you questions today on how IRPL would really fit into, you know, the practice for a new grad optometrist or even seasoned ODs who are probably really interested in this. Um, so yeah, we can get started with the first question. Uh, when a new technology like IRPL is added to a dry eye clinic, what is the best way to make patients aware of this new device? Or in other words, how do you efficiently market IRPL? So you know, for optometrists, first of all, um, bringing in, you know, uh, an IPL, an IRPL, or an RF machine is still, um, they're still pioneers in this space. So uh, first thing is that there's not a perfect answer how to market this. Um, I know also optometrists are not necessarily salespeople, and they don't necessarily, you know, want to be spending their time uh, giving their uh, patients sales pitches. So to get around that, the first thing I always suggest is talk about it early and often. Obviously, you want to talk about it with the patients that are going to be great candidates for the device. But if you yourself or your staff can be talking about this device, you know, just in conversation or bringing it up, pointing out different posters and stuff like that, um, it's going to become more common to that patient. So, you know, down the road, that's not going to seem like it's a surprise or it's something that, you know, the doctor is, you know, springing on you to try and uh, make a quick buck or for whatever it is, you know, they're going to be a little bit more comfortable with that. Uh, the other thing too, is to talk about it with them in the exam rooms. So that's probably going to be the first and most um, crucial touch point. Point, uh, that you're going to have with your patient. Um, now I know from hearing feedback from some of the doctors that we work with that have the EI, um, when you're explaining a lot of the science uh, treatment and, you know, um, modality with the device, a lot of this is going to go maybe over their heads or, you know, their eyes are going to probably glaze over. They're probably not going to remember a whole lot. You know, they're going to probably remember bits and pieces of it. So what a couple of doctors do, like Dr. Bahashi, uh, Stony Creek Eyewear Boutique, um, what he does is he has a couple of screens in his office. So what he does, and I know, you know, not everybody has the space for this or maybe the option to have a screen. But if you do, having a visual is really important because this is complex stuff. So any way that you can kind of quantify this to your patients is really important. So if they can kind of follow along and look at something, this is going to help. What's also going to help, though, is having a bit of marketing material to maybe send them home with. So what we do is we provide a lot of this EI material with visuals and information about how the treatment works, uh, the procedure, the days that you're going to be coming in, and you're going to send them home with this. So we can also customize this, um, you know, with uh, the logo and the website, uh, the address and the phone number to kind of personalize it a little bit for your patient base and to kind of um, differentiate yourself in the local
local market. So by sending them home with this, this is something that they have in their hands, so they're not going to forget about it. It's a reminder. It's also something that they can go home and read. Chances are is that that's going to reiterate a lot of the information that you've spent in the exam room talking about them with. Uh, they may also forget it from there. So the idea is, is that from there, you also want to have the same information on your website. And you want to have maybe a nice dedicated page. Uh, because I did communication studies over at Wilfrid Laurier University here in Ontario. Um, so we studied a lot of social media. And something I'm quick to say with people is that uh, even the experts don't quite know why something goes viral and why people really gravitate towards content. There's a lot of really good ideas. And, you know, I'm sure that's a, another podcast for another time. Uh, but my point is, is that you want to invest heavily in your website because chances are your patient bases are probably going to be able to access your website. Uh, like my grandmother was a Google warrior, you know, she could, uh, she could Google everything, maybe not get to page two of Google, but of course, yeah. like nobody ever gets to there, right? Um, but still, she would go through the website and she would be able to look through it. Um, the only thing is she's not going to be able to find that information on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So having that same inf information reiterated in a few different places, you know, face to face, something physical they can read, and then maybe something digital uh, is really going to help out as well. Um, any posters, you know, video loops, again, if maybe you have access to that uh, for your clinic would be really great. Uh, and then as well, uh, patient referrals, um, because if you look at the data from all the EI treatments that have happened so far since its inception, 96% uh, of the patients recommended it to their friends and family. Wow, yeah. that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, would IMED Pharma provide any of that either physical or digital marketing material if you do um, have the EI in your office? Mm -hmm. So um, we're not actually the manufacturers of the EI. We're manufacturers mm -hmm. of all of our other retail products, which is really great. And that's the reason why, you know, we know our products so well and we make sure that our patients really love our products. Um, but when it comes to the EI, ESW is the company uh, that manufactures this. And so they would provide a lot of this marketing material, a lot of the digital stuff. Oh, uh, gotcha. When it comes to actually printing it and providing it with the consumable kits for the device, that's something that we do as kind of a favor for our client base. So we like to go above and beyond for them in a lot of different ways. And one of those ways is understanding that they probably don't have an industrial size printing press in the back room. Um, so we can kind of help them out with that, at least yeah. for now. Yeah, that would be great. Cause yeah, it's, it's always nice to have online uh, marketing available too. So people can just kind of plop that onto their website rather than them panicking, trying to figure out how to make their website look nice with this new web page on there. <laughs> of course. Um, no, I really like that idea of um, using patients as the advocate for these kind of devices, because if you just tell one patient to kind of go out there and say, oh, if this worked for you, tell your friends and family, mm -hmm. you know, word of mouth is huge. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so are there any patients that IRPL treatments would be contraindicated in? Yes. So we do have a consent form, which is just among the materials that we would provide to you. So among, you know, the, the trifolds that we might give to you, you're going to actually have a consent form that your patients would sign and that you're going to keep track of. Um, just very quickly, though, just uh, off the top of my head, I know that uh, epilepsy, uh, you know, with the bright, quick flashes of light, of course, this is not going to be uh, a treatment good for a patient like that, uh, as well, pregnancy uh, and diabetes. Now, these are two things that um, this type of treatment wouldn't necessarily really affect these things. Um, but uh, there aren't the studies right now to say that it absolutely does not. So being very cautious with some of these things, um, you know, for a pregnant woman, they will say uh, probably just to not do the treatment right now, uh, as well as somebody with a pacemaker. Uh, allergy to sunlight, somebody who has had a very recent sunburn, but this would be, I would say, in the last, you know, couple of days, couple of weeks, maybe month at the most. Um, an infection in the treatable area, of course, you would want to wait until that is all resolved. Uh, no tanning products either or um, food supplements that promote tanning either. Um, and then as well, uh, skin type. So this is very important because, um, you know, if we were to get into the training and technicals of it right now, um, you know, I could explain the, the scale but essentially we use the Fitzpatrick scale mm -hmm. um, and the skin mode uh, six on it is the one that they say you should not be doing this treatment with and that's because of the presence of the melanin in the skin and that can become uh, very uncomfortable and also burn them as well. How much training would be required for eye care professionals and even clinical staff members um, to start performing IRPL treatments on their patients? 
So this is one of the really, really, really good things about the EI. Um, it is almost foolproof. When I do demonstrations with people and I show them the screen, um, they're almost shocked at the amount of stuff that they can't screw up. Um, <laughs> EI does a really good job of Just that. Just wait till we get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my expert training, trust you, you guys will be experts. Um, but, um, but besides that, um, yes, it is really, really, really simple to use. Like there's all of maybe three or four different screens that you're really going through. Um, the options in terms of buttons to press are very few. Um, so you can you can really pick it up and honestly the first time looking at it. Um, but usually through the demonstrations, by the time you know we've gotten to this point where maybe a clinic is going to purchase this device, usually the doctors are, are have a pretty good understanding of what they're doing. Um, what I would do though is go back and train them and make sure that they are 100 percent comfortable. With a couple of our doctors, what I've done is I've gone for the very first treatment uh, and I've just been present for that to make sure that everything goes okay and obviously all of them do uh, and because it is so easy to use uh, a lot of clinics right now are getting the staff to um, to kind of take over before or after so what some clinics will do is um, you know the doctor will come in and do the flashes necessary very click and out and then the staff member will kind of deal with the gel clearing it off and then also this is a really 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 good time where the staff member can maybe um, you know, use uh, an expression machine, maybe if you have one, or let's say you're doing a bit of a medi spa, and this is maybe where you want to provide, uh, maybe this is when you're lighting a candle and putting on some music. Um, but uh, yeah, regardless, <laughs> super, super, super easy to use, and you do not need a certificate to, to operate this machine. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's been pretty um, quick too. So like when we um, have gotten the treatment done on ourselves, it also seemed like the setup was really fast too, just from hearing, like I had the goggles on, so I couldn't see, but just hearing how fast the setup was, um, it does seem like it takes minimal amount of time. Um, I'm, the, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It did look really complicated to use, um, but I, when I, what, yeah, like what you're saying, the setup was really fast yeah. and the whole process was pretty fast. Yeah. Um, I think the only confusing looking part was um, when I know my rep, Adam, when he did the IRPL on me, it's just plugging it in because you yeah. have to take it out of the briefcase. So it's just like <laughs> plugging in all the parts. I was like, whoa, this looks like an octopus. Like, what is this? Like, many, yep. Too Wand many places to put things around. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and I guess once you have it set it in up, the briefcase, that was yeah. that once you have it set up, then of course you're not, you know, taking it apart every single time yeah. after a patient. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, at least for size compared to some of the other IPLs out there, it is pretty decently sized. You can uh, cover it if uh, that makes sense. Um, it's also pretty small that you can put it on a little wheelable cart if you want to do that um, or maybe stash it away. Um, so in, in terms of like size, um, it's not bad like that either. And and I know it probably looks very complicated, but essentially, you know, the um, I would say the most uh, difficult part about the entire thing is just essentially applying your gel. Um, because sometimes you're going to have a bottle with, uh, you know, only like a little bit of gel left. So you're trying to, you're trying to slap it so that, you know, it all gets to the bottom and you're still going to get that, you know, that catch up squirting bottle yeah. sound, but that, that, that's really the worst of it. Yeah. Yeah. My rep definitely experienced that a few times <laughs> when we were doing this on me. Um, but just to get on the more of the money side of this device, how much is the total cost of the EI um, IRPL device? So currently the EI is uh, 56995 um, and that uh, is obviously plus tax. Uh, now for an additional $10,000 as well, what we offer is an unlimited kit package. So for the first five years, uh, we provide as many consumable kits as you can go through. Wow. How many flashes would um, you get in one use before you have to buy another replacement? Yeah. So what's nice about this, uh, like this device compared to a lot of other IPLs, um, it is much more concerned with the quality of light. So with any type of device that you're using, you know, if you have a dedicated piece of tech, uh, that piece of tech is probably going to need to be maintenance after a certain number of years or consistently or whatever that is. Um, now, because the EI uses consumable kits, um, it, or sorry, um, because it's very concerned with the quality of light, it's going to be using consumable kits because it wants to replace that bulb each single time. 
right, to make sure the quality of light is the same for all the treatments. So with each single bulb that you get, and this is part of the consumable kit, so you're going to get your bulb, you get maybe a couple extra goggles, let's say if you lose it or sit on it, um, or you would also provide uh, the ultrasound gel to you as well, marketing materials, kind of all together in one. Um, but with that bulb is going to come an activation card. Now together with these two, um, there's 500 flashes, uh, 10 is going to be done per side, or sorry, uh, 10 per patient, five per side. And so you're going to be able to do 50 patients. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's still pretty good. That's a lot of patients for yeah. one bulb. Yeah. And, and the thing is with the consumable kit, a big reason why people have gone with it and actually every single person so far that has purchased the device with us has purchased this consumable kit. Um, and the reason being is when you don't have to count out the flashes and you know your margin per head, um, you can administer a couple of extra flashes. And because this is has the same uh, IPL technology that a lot of the other devices have, plus you know the IRPL technology that it has, um, you can still get some cosmetic results as well. Um, so when you have done a limited flashes, you can do those extra flashes. Now, I wouldn't say to your patients, you know, you're going to make them look 10 years younger, kind of let them stumble upon, you know, those effects. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, so far, people have seen a lot of freedom with it. Yeah. And um, going back a little bit to cost, now that we know how much the machine itself costs, what factors do eye care professionals need to consider when they decide how much they should be charging for each I IRPL treatment? Yeah, so a couple of things, and I know this is uh, it's a really interesting spot for an optometrist to be in because, like I mentioned before, uh, they're probably still a pioneer in their city uh, for bringing in a device like this. Uh, so something that you want to do first is you want to check out your local market. So you want to see uh, competing devices, right? So these could be other IPLs, you know, RF devices. Essentially, you want to get a good idea of the other dry eye services that other clinics are providing, um, and kind of get an idea of um, who's around you, how close, and maybe how how much overlap your demographics or patient bases might have. Um, now, something else as well is you can check out their website. You can maybe try emailing them or reaching out to them via phone number if you know them personally, or maybe just, you know, one professional to another. Um, as well, considering your own demographic and your own patient base. Of course, if you're going to be in a little bit, let's say maybe more cottage country in Ontario, you might charge a little bit less than maybe if you were, you know, downtown in the heart of Toronto. Right. Mm -hmm. So knowing your demographic, who they are and what they're likely to pay for is really important as well. Uh, something else to consider when you're building up the cost structure of a treatment like this is going to be your value adds. So, you know, just doing just an EI treatment is great. But what a lot of people are having success with um, are providing value adds in the treatment. And what I mean by this is this could be additional devices um that people are using so um i know there's a couple of uh people actually in london that have just picked up the ei optometrist on colborne and uh, view vision center um one of them has a lipoflow one of them has an ilux um so basically they've picked up both of you know the lipoflow and the ilux before the ei and now the ei is kind of that final puzzle piece that's bringing it together um so if you have a second device you can and you could you can and should charge a little bit more um if you have let's say an expression machine like Dr. Bahashi, um, then perhaps you can provide this as a service directly after or before as well for this treatment. So this is uh, something that the staff might do. Dr. Bahashi will probably do the treatment himself. The staff will maybe come in and then maybe use this device. So this is a great opportunity if you have a clinic and let's say you picked up um, a device or a diagnostic tool for whatever reason um, before, and let's say you weren't able to integrate it into the clinic you really wanted to, and maybe just didn't quite get the ball rolling on it, this is a really good opportunity to bring that back into the fold and build that into your cost structure, which yeah. is really nice. Um, now as well, uh, I mentioned uh, just now diagnostic tools as well. If you have a diagnostic tool and let's say, um, let's say you have like a keratograph or something like that, something that does mybography or a tear check, something um, similar to that, you're probably also paying that off. So you probably also have fees associated with that. So you got to be conscious of that, building that in as well. Um, and then maybe charging a bit more for it too. Yeah. I guess it's really just like, yeah, if you have more than one dry eye treatment available to your patients, that's not an artificial tear at that point. Like, <laughs> that is like a dry eye clinical experience. Like you're giving them, you know, a bigger package with all of the treatment options that address all of the factors of dry eye, which is, which is great. I guess, yeah, that is the easier way to add value to how much you're going to charge for each treatment. 
with the more mm -hmm. things that you add on, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then also too, um, you know, let's say uh, maybe some, uh, say some really nice reps have come by and dropped off, you know, a ton of samples. And let's say you've just got a cupboard full of drops and wipes and omegas and masks and a whole bunch of stuff. This is also a good time to start using those, providing those to your patients. Um, you know, maybe you can charge uh, them for it as well. This is also a good chance to get them to try some products. If you maybe say, hey, I'm going to give you, you know, an eye drop MGD um, after you're done your treatment or with with your very first treatment and then you can start to use this product as well because that's just going to help things more yeah yeah actually yeah the nice thing about imed pharma that i like too is that you guys have these um mgd kits that you can also give right so you have these little zip up bags that you put in your lid scrub your mgd drop your heated eye mask the vitamins and um yeah i just feel like when you're adding all these things together and it's all with that one brand name or brand logo on there it really makes you guys feel like or it makes patients feel like oh this is my one-stop shop for all of my dry eye treatment and i'm getting the whole package i'm getting the ei i'm getting the mgd kits i'm getting all the other products i'm getting the treatments um yeah it just makes it so much easier for patients to get all of their therapy in one area, which I really like too. I like the consistency that one brand kind of has it all, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah. We have a schedule card in there as well, because I know compliance is, uh, you know, toughest thing with any patient and any. That's health. nice. A schedule uh, card. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> like it's like our VT homework sheets. You just check yeah. off each day that you <laughs> do your yeah. stuff. Exactly. And easy for the patients. Absolutely. Because again, they just open up that kit and, you know, even if the, the most basic logic is just use everything in front of me, then that's great. They're going to get something out of it at least than just mm -hmm. keeping it in the cupboard and not using it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing as well, nice for a clinic to be able to say, here's a package, use this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have everything now. Well, yes. We've given it all here. I can safely sleep at night knowing, you know, you have an Omega in there. You've got a mask, you've got a drop, you've got a wipe. I'm doing as much as I can here to try and get you in a better place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So true. Yeah. Um, what it would be the best way for eye care professionals to maintain the IRPL device so that it can be used, um, long-term. So it is a very, very, very durable device. Um, not that I've dropped it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I definitely haven't. Um, <laughs> but it is very, very, very durable. Um, if you were to pick it up and hold it, like you can tell just from the quality of materials um, when you're holding it, it's not going to fall apart on you. Um, I wouldn't say go bowling with it. Uh, definitely keep it away from water as well. So when you're disinfecting it or cleaning the device, uh, this would be the point where you'd want to spray the cloth versus maybe spraying the handle or the device itself. Just, you know, little tiny things like that can always help out. Um, not ripping the plug out, out of the wall before you kind of power it down. I just know that from um, all electronic devices, you know, with my gaming systems, you know, over the years being a kid and whatnot. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a fairly low maintenance device, which is really, really, really nice. And again, it's another selling feature of it. Yeah. Um, Terrence, is there anything else eye care professionals need to think about before implementing um, this device into their clinic? Sure thing. Yeah. Um, just for uh, ju just to speak to cost too, uh, getting into it and like what to like actually charge the patients for like dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. um, at least in my area of Ontario right now, and, and remember, I'm, I'm I don't see downtown Toronto, um, but for right now, it seems kind of on average, uh, people are charging about you know eight hundred to a thousand dollars for a three session package, uh, and it is important that they uh, they do that three session package. You also sell it to them as the three session package because uh, this is a treatment where somebody can you know if they have a full set of glands ready to get back to work. Uh, they can possibly feel a, a lot of symptom relief right after that first treatment. And if they're, you know, anything like my dad is a little bit old school who thinks, you know, uh, oh, I'm feeling better. I beat the system. I'm smart. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I, yeah. I can keep out on this money or, or whatever it is, you know, th that's going to go away after a week. So you want to make yeah. sure that you're selling it to them in that session so that they're more inclined to come back for that second and third treatment. Um, like I mentioned before, if you're going to use, um, you know, two devices, I don't really have an average on what people are charging for that. That's that's kind of up to them. Um, but it is definitely more um, if they have two devices are definitely charging more for that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also, too, you can offer possible maintenance uh, sessions. So um, let's say they've already done their three sessions and let's say maybe in a year, you know, they've gotten a good year out of it, or maybe it's a year and a half or two years like to come back for one more treatment. Then, you know, you can charge them for maybe four or five hundred dollars. Yeah. 
that's that's completely also up to the doctors you know what they want to charge the fees associated um so yeah yeah that's great thank you terrence you answered all of our questions with so much information i'm really excited for any of our listeners who's uh listening to this episode and the one prior to this about the EI and the IRPL device. I mean, um, it would be really exciting to see how many people will start to implement this in their practice because it is, it is really nice when you can give dry eye therapy as a complete package for your patients, especially all from one company. And Mm -hmm. the reps are great, at least from (laughs) us, the reps, our reps are great. So it's definitely a company that we love working with too. You guys are so easy to reach, so comforting to talk to. You give us so much information all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely, I think we all recommend anybody listening here to check out iMed Pharma, check out their products, consider mm-hmm. the IRPL device because yeah, you're right. If you're selling at least three sessions to each patient, you are going to pay off that device after a while. Like it, it's going to pay off because you're locking in that patient for at least a couple of sessions that they can't just take one and run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, we were, um, lucky enough. I met pharma was really generous and gave us, uh, me deep on and Rav free, uh, IRPL treatments, um, mm-hmm. three sessions total, but I think I've only had two, I don't know, deep on how many I've only had, had two as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause we're still spacing it out and you guys have been so generous with us, letting us try that, um, so that we can give our honest and personal opinions on the device as well and the treatments. Um, Deepon, do you want to share your experience? Cause you started before I did. So you've yeah. had it done longer than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have mild to dry eye. Um, and then when I first did the treatment, the only thing I had to do or prepare for it was I didn't wear any eye makeup or anything. And I did have to take out my nose ring. That was the only thing. And then, um, yeah, when, uh, I started or when the ultrasound gel was being put on my face, when that was put on my face, it just felt like a facial. And then I was like, all right, I could just sit here all day and do this. (laughs) And then, um, yeah, so that was really comfortable. Um, when the actual flashes of light were happening, it just felt like quick sensations of heat. It wasn't painful for me. It didn't feel uncomfortable at all. I literally told my rep Ben that, you know what? I could do this all day. So yeah, you stick around and do that. That's totally fine. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, one thing I did notice for sure though, is uh, I did my second treatment on the 15th day, but I didn't really reach for my eye drops or anything for those two weeks. And I um, usually use my drops at least about a couple times during uh, the day. So that's one thing I noticed. Um, so that was really nice. And then I kind of started using my drops by um, like the 13th or 14th day until I got my second treatment. And it was the same thing again. It was really comfortable, fine, good, mm-hmm. no pain, nothing there going on. And yeah, it was good. I recommend it. I loved it. And I'm trying to convince my um, current clinic owner to get it. So I'm all for it. I'm on board for it. And yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So you felt like you didn't need to use your drops though after your second treatment? Not after first my first and second treatment. Oh, wow. Actually. Yeah. So, but my dry is pretty mild. So mm-hmm. I felt, you know, pretty good after the first one. I also got my glands expressed and it felt great. So yeah, there was not major issues for me, but I know Amrit, your dry eye is a little bit more severe than mine. So Um, if my rep Adam is listening, I felt really bad for Adam because, you know, he was really excited. He really hyped it up. And I was like, listen, my eyes are really, really dry. I don't think I I have low, low expectations for IRPL. I don't, that is the typical dry eye patient though, right? So you're like perfect for this. Yeah. 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 And, but I mean, the, the thing is, I, I was just, I'm really skeptical of anything because again, I, you know, you've tried, I've tried 15 different brands of artificial tears. I've taken Omega three since I was like 16. I've taken flaxseed oil since I was 16 or 15 uh, n- there's so many, and I've had the heated eye masks. They just burn my skin. Cause I put them too hot. So like everything, <laughs> everything's just, um, nothing was really working as much as when I started to use the iMed drops. I kid you not. I know the drops for sure 
were life-changing for me, especially the gel one. It is the only gel drop I've ever experienced in my life. And we will probably have a whole episode about this gel drop um, because <laughs> it does not blur your vision when you put it in. So I actually use that during the day. But so yes, my, my rep was really um, hyping up the IRPL. Um, after the first treatment, I felt the, the treatment itself was really good. I agree with Deepon. It felt like just someone was just um, putting a blow dryer like over your closed eyes for a couple of seconds at a time. So the heat level isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. um, it's really comfort comfortable and you just feel like you want to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, but after the treatment, I, the first one, I felt the, I felt the exact same. And Adam was like smiling like, so, so I'm like, <laughs> no, I feel the exact same. I'm still dry. But after the second session, I think Adam's hopes were down too. Cause he's like, all right, let's just get this over with. You won't feel any better. <laughs> um, but I swear to you guys, I couldn't feel my eyelids or my eyes after that second treatment. Like I was so hydrated that I, I don't know what that feels like. And I was like blinking constantly in front of him. I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. I don't feel my eyelids rubbing against my eyes anymore. And you don't feel that friction. Anymore. I don't feel that friction. Sometimes yeah. I can hear it too. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, it was amazing. It did last for, I'd say at least two days, two days. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't have to use my drops as often in the morning or um, after work when I drive home. But I mean, now it's been a week. Now I still kind of feel back to the same, but I do believe now that if I do my third treatment and then probably maintenance uh, treatments, I think my symptoms would likely be less than what they are now, which is still really good for a dry eye patient. Any level of decrease in my symptoms is always a win. Even if it's like not 50%, if it's a 20% reduction, I'm still happy. So yeah, it was still good. I really do recommend um, more ODs to contact their IMED reps and try it and um, try that for your dry eye patients. I think it's definitely a great option to add to all the other treatments that they're already doing because why not? It'll bring their symptoms down even, even 10%. That's still better than nothing. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that it's worked out well for both of you. Um, yeah. What makes, uh, you know, working for a company like iMed um, and uh, working with a product like the EI so easy is because I hear things like this from real people after doing the treatments with them. Um, also to what you've both said, um, falls in line with what we've seen with a lot of people. So some people do say right after that first treatment, you know, like their glands are probably, um, you know, deep ponds, uh, glands are probably a little bit, uh, she probably has more of them, maybe some of them quite a, not as many yeah. atrophy maybe. Um, yeah. So they're gonna get back to the work. So that makes sense. But I would say after that third treatment, yeah, you're probably gonna notice the biggest difference. And that's where, when you look at the data, that's where everybody sees the biggest difference as well. Yeah. So I'm excited for you to do that third treatment and to hear how you feel. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm like counting down the days. I already told Adam, like at, right when I took the goggles off, we opened up my schedule. I'm like, when are you coming back? <laughs> when, make sure you come this time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll pass on the feedback to him. I'm sure he'll be really happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you again, Terrence, for um, giving us all the information about um, the EI IRPL device. Uh, we'll add all the information um, in our episode description box for anyone who's interested in learning more about it. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to chatting with you again sometime in the future. Awesome. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, next time, just let me know and I'll be back. <laughs>